In the last chapters we looked at for and while loops in MATLAB or Octave and then after that at vectors or matrices. Here we are checking out how the if structure operates. Let's start with an example. Let's say we have got a line, a, a vector with some numbers and we would like to calculate how many um, once there are in this line. Probably with your eye when counting, in our culture at least, you would start from the left, skim through the line and uh, for each element check whether the element equals 1 and if that is then take your finger and add up. So we'll just translate this example into a little MATLAB program. Okay, so let's start to do that again, write a program and we'll do that here, program, whatever we call it. Okay, um, as always, best to start with clear all and CLC to clear the screen and all the content stored. And now we would like to have some uh, a vector actually that needs to be given. I'll just check that it's the same numbers as stated on the paper. Okay, and now we would like to check how many ones there are. In this case it's probably four the result. So how would you do that? First skim through all the um, elements. That is best to be done with a for loop. Start with the first element. The index i is what? Uh, we check the v at the position i and we need to ramp up to the number of elements and the easiest thing is to get the number of elements not just counting the elements but, but typing in length from um, the vector. Okay, now we need to compare the element with 1 whether it's equal or not. And in the plain language it is if the element is equal to 1 and in the same way we just write it down here if the element equals 1 then something has to be done. Let's just finish the structure, the for needs an end and the if structure needs an end. And what needs to be done is stated in here between the if and the end corresponding to this um, if. And we said rise a finger if um, vi equals 1. So we start with finger equals 0 at the initial value is 0 and the finger needs to increase by 1 in case the element equals 1. And we run this program and get the 4. Okay, that's it. That's a basic if structure. You need to have this comparison and the statement is executed when this comparison gives a logical true. For the if stru structure there are the same symbols possible for the comparison as for the while loop. So it's small or small or equal or less than uh, less than or equal, greater, greater than or equal, equal to, not equal. So choose whatever you want and what corresponds to the task. 
Additionally, you can, as in a plain language, um, add different or more conditions. If uh, the weather is fine and it is Sunday, then we'll go swimming. So you have two conditions and these conditions are in the programming language are combined with the um, edit sign here, end sign. Similarly, or or not sign. And this structure is that you've got the comparison or the, um, the logical operator, which could be combined here with another logical operator and even you can have different uh, conditions stated or uh, separated with the else or else if. Rather than explaining that here in detail you need to try out or just learn by doing, figure it out by typing in a few examples. For instance here an example and I'll we'll look at that. Uh, the task is to create a matrix 7 times 6 with these elements. It's always a 3 and just the upper elements are 5, the lower ones are 5 and the others are a 0. So, could we write a program to do that? Let's get that done and started. Okay. Um, I'll just move that down here that we can check the matrix. So, um, 7 times 6, so we need two for loops that ramp up two indices i and j, 1 to 7 and 1 to 6. And then the matrix i, j needs to contain some, some, some number. Let's start with putting in a 3 in all elements and uh, that would be the start and after that we can change the other elements. Okay, right, that is simple. We got the big matrix uh, with the uh, 3. So, in plain language, the condition is if i equals 1, then the element mj has to be 5. I'll just put in a semicolon here to suppress the output and just output the matrix at the end. Uh, there is an end missing. Yes, I forgot to put that in here. So that's giving, stating that it's the 5 up there. So we could either create another condition if i equals uh, 7 m i j equals 5. Again, <laughs> the end is missing. Okay, uh, that is using two uh, if statements. Likewise, we could combine that here. If uh, i equals 1 or i equals 7. In this case, we don't need the other if structure. Okay, that's more or less done. The other thing is we need uh, just to add in a similar way uh, the condition if j equals uh, 1 or j equals, ah, 
I'll just six m i j needs to be zero. Would that give the matrix as demanded? Not quite. Well, I don't know why I always forget the end. Okay, that's it. Close to the condition was in a way right, but the position in the um, loop here is wrong. So this one needs to move up there to actually first set the zeros and then the uh, five are written over the uh, other elements. Try that out and make sure that you understand the logic in these statements and that you can arrange the uh, structure in different uh, ways. Might even get the same answer, the same output with different structure uh, in the program. That's it more or less for the if structure. <clears throat> All what is needed is some practice and that will um, or you will do in exercises. See you soon.